Hey friends, it's always a really great idea to just take some time in your business and review the things that you've done by looking back at both your accomplishments, your challenges, the data that you have, are you hitting your goals? What's really happening? This is something fun to do monthly, quarterly, yearly, actually weekly if you really are on top of things. Here's a couple of tips in this podcast episode today. We are gonna tune into how to review your year, quarter, or month in your business and uh, some ideas for going forward, developing a plan, and getting you on the track to make great things happen. Let's go. Hey friend, if you are an online business owner who would love to grow your brand online, focus on the right marketing strategies for you and be able to promote your business with confidence, then let's connect. My name is Jessica Wanglin. I'm a wife and a mom of two, and I've been an online business owner for more than 10 years. I'm passionate about helping women to love their branding and rock their content. I invite you to join in as we talk marketing, branding, motivation, content creation, and productivity to make great things happen in your business today. You have amazing things to accomplish, friends, so let's get started. Hey friends, happy new year. Welcome back to the Marketing and Mindset Podcast. If I don't know you, I'm super glad that you're here. Really exciting to talk about all things marketing, content, branding, and websites for your business. Those are the areas that we focus on here at the podcast. And if you don't know me, let's chat a little bit about that, but I wanna definitely get into the show today. We're gonna talk about how to review your year, your quarter or your month, or even your week in your business so you can reflect on the right things and make the best plan going forward. So this podcast is being published in January, meaning perhaps we're looking at the past year for this one, but that doesn't mean you can't revisit this and listen to some of the questions again and go back to the priorities I'm gonna talk about to really just get things more in motion for your business. They can be a really great idea to get yourself energized for going forward and doing something new. Sometimes when we have slow seasons like the summer sometimes tends to be slow and kids are home, or you know, this time of the winter is a little slow sometimes in business, but it really is a time that you can do fun things and get some great things situated. Always a great idea to just look at the data and reflect and know what's happening for your business. So hi, come on in. If you don't know me, we're gonna jump in and say hi really quick. I'm gonna tell you my online business story. So I you know, went to school for like all the things like normal people do. Communication studies was my major. I ended up having a career in college athletics, which was really fun. I got to work at basketball games and travel and go to sporting events and all kinds of fun things. And then switched a little bit into um, working specifically in higher education administration. I have my master's and my PhD in those fields. But sadly enough, perhaps luckily enough, that job broke up with me a couple times, even though I tried to make things work in that career. And I had always had the side hustle in the background. In 2009, I started a home decor blog, which was about me refinishing my furniture in my apartment at the time. And I would just talk about the process online. I had amazing success with that blog. It's really fun. If you want to find it, it's called decoradventures.com. And I loved just creating content in telling the story in sharing my life that way with people from the perspective of something I was super passionate about being home decor and DIY work. I love doing things myself. I love learning about that whole world. I'm a very visual person. So it just all connected. And then I started to learn about how you could actually take that kind of side thing like blogging back when it was called blogging at the time into be a real passion. And so I ended up starting a network marketing team, which was also both a kind of combo online and person business, which I still do in the wellness space. I love natural living. It's super important to me. That's a fun idea, uh, a fun way that I get to connect with people in person and online and, and showcase skills and things like that. But now I run my own business and I have my own brand, which is my own name. And I talk about all things marketing related to your business. And this podcast specifically is about the mindset component too, because we know that you have to be in the right place to do the right things for your business. When you're confident and you feel good and you have a plan and you know what you know you really are passionate about doing, you're gonna show up differently. And so those are the things we talk about on the show. We talk about branding. I provide branding services for online entrepreneurs. So I can do all the logos, all the things, all the social images and all those goodies. I also design websites, which I'm super passionate about doing. I have so much fun doing website strategy and creating an online tool that can be an amazing hub for your business. But I also love to talk about content because like I said, when I started my online business, the content was the product. 
And I think that, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a future episode, content long form specifically is going to become a huge part of business now in 23 and in the future. And it really has to do with sharing your message, helping people understand what you're about and getting, helping people get to know you. And it's a way to have a simple marketing strategy that is sustainable, that doesn't burn you out doing like the online social hustles and all the short form things all the time. Um, and so that's what I'd love to talk about. But today we're going to talk specifically about how to review your year in your business, or again, perhaps your quarter or your month, whenever you feel like you just want to take some time and set apart a couple of hours to do this kind of thing. It doesn't have to take that long, of course, can be done pretty specifically. But when you kind of start an online business, there are so many things to pay attention to, right? And we don't often do things like make sure we track all of our income and all of our expenses and write down all of our totals and social media following and make pie charts of where the money's coming and all the things like that. Do we know what sales funnels are working good and where email subscribers are coming from? These things can drive and should drive your business decisions, right? So it's a really great idea to know what's happening with your business. Take a look back at the things like there were some years I didn't even have any idea how much money I had made. Now it wasn't very much. I'm talking a couple hundred dollars, literally very in the early stages when I really first started making money online. But that is really important to know, right? So you want to do it. But reviewing your data like this and your info, just your year in general, it's not just about data, can really get you out of a rut. Like what if you took a look at something and you thought, oh my gosh, there's such a great percentage of income coming in from this thing that I should spend more time doing that because it's going to get me these results, perhaps with less effort than I'm doing another thing. And we all know that's much of the reason why you go into doing an online business, whether it's part time, which probably it is for most people, is so that you can earn an extra money, some extra money and have a, an amazing hobby, a passion that you really can pour yourself into and earn, you know, and do great things with it. Okay. So reviewing all this information helps you get refocused, re-energized. So think about if you're going to look for something and you think like, oh, I have this idea for doing such and such. If you're not paying attention to your email list and your email numbers are stagnant, you can get really, email is really exciting. I love email. And it can be so much fun to find a new area of your business that you can just pour yourself into and get, get energized about, right? So here's a couple of things. I have four simple things for you to do to review your year or quarter or month in your business, some side notes. Um, so here they are. So number one, how did the last year go for you? Like what happened? Can you really look back and write down what were some of the main activities that you're doing for your business? Could you actually sit down and just talk about like, what did you do? What happened? What did you spend the majority of your time doing? Um, that would be really great to know. How would you rate your progress? Would you pay yourself the salary that you're paying, that you're getting paid now? Would that be something that would be worthwhile to know? Would you, how much would you pay yourself for it? Like, did, were you happy with the results, right? What are your focus areas and intentions that you had set forward? Did you meet them? Did you not? Like, you know, how did some of the, those things go and, and what would you do differently about setting goals? Did you set the right goals? Did you set smart goals? You know, did you do, you know, the smart goal, like the things, you know, the time related, all those are important to know. What are the most important tasks that you need to plan, create and execute for your business specifically? If you're not paying attention to a couple things, which we're actually going to talk about later in uh, the show, I'm going to give you kind of some tips behind the scenes. If you don't know what those things are that you should be paying attention to, I will give you some behind the scenes. So t just remember to tune in later at the end and you will find those out. So take some time, first of all, to review the year, reflect on your accomplishments. What were big and small things you achieved? Maybe you finally put out your first opt-in. Super amazing. What kind of knowledge or skills did you acquire over the past year? That's really fun to know um, for sure. And then what kind of obstacles did you face and what did you do to overcome them? That's really great to think about as well. Did you attend your first conference? Did you get your first featured in? All of those things are really, really fun. So then once you're done reviewing these things, Spend some time, number two, gather your data. Like we were saying, here's some things, important audience numbers and sales numbers and place them into just a simple Google spreadsheet 
that you can find. I do this in a sheet on my Google Drive called admin. And so I keep a lot of information there, like what's happening, what are some programs going on, where are the numbers happening, and just set up a sheet that is worthwhile for you to look at and review that's gonna be helpful. And then that's what you wanna repeat monthly and quarterly if you want. Some people just do this yearly. It depends on the complexity of your business at the time. But here are some data points, numbers, if you haven't thought about getting for your business. Number one, get your website analytics for sure. If you don't have Google Analytics installed on your website, go ahead and look up doing that. Those usually go in your headers or footers or hook data, that kind of thing. Google Analytics will show you where people are coming from to your website. How they are they finding you? Now, if you don't have a site, Go ahead and look for the analytics on things like your Instagram account. It shows you when people are on your account, what the demographics is of some of those people that are coming into your account. Same thing with Facebook. You can see ads. You can see things about when posts are performing in different ways. But just take a look at your numbers. Even if you don't know those, sometimes it's really fascinating to see what they are, actually. Second point of data, sales. Hello. If you haven't written down any of the sales numbers that you have, it's a great way to do that. Write down what digital products you have, what services you offer, and how much you're making for each. Great thing to know. Um, Email list numbers is another thing. Email lists are so important these days, and I think they're going to become more and more important actually in 23 and beyond. They say that the email marketing industry is growing to the billions of dollar mark um, where people actually spend their money is through email. So if you're not paying attention to your email list, go ahead and do that. It's also fun to see in your email list, particularly, again, where people are coming from based on how you've tagged them. And if you can kind of group that data, if you can tell that people are coming from collaborations that you've done or bundles that you've been in, or if they're coming specifically for one type of opt-in and not the other, great way to know those things as well. Social following is another data number, of course. I put it a little bit lower on the test, not the list, not necessarily for any specific reason, but you have to make sure, of course, your social following is translating into email subscribers and dollars for you because you can have those reels that go viral, but if you're not getting um, the income about it, you have to take a look at switching that a little bit, right? And getting the right funnel for your people. And then another great revenue to know, um, number to know in terms of data is time spent on tasks. So do you know how much time you're actually spending writing your content or with one-on-one clients or, Um, spending time managing your Facebook group, things like that. Think about seeing if you could break that out possibly. There's a lot of different task um, timer type things that you can get um, that can help you do that. So in talking about reviewing your business and reviewing your year or even your quarter or your month, number three, what you wanna do after you have all these goodies and you've reflected on a lot of the questions we talked about and you have information in front of you, Let's go ahead and set your priorities for the for the year, right? Or for the quarter, whatever that looks like. What is one project that you will focus on each month? Now, project can mean a couple different things. This could be a specific topic area if you plan out your marketing in a way that you talk about a specific content topic that month or even that quarter is a really great idea. So I teach people about marketing. So the four components, use four or five component topic areas that I talk about include branding, websites, Uh, marketing plans in general and just content, right? And then in marketing, we have like email, things like that. So say for the first quarter of the year, I wanted to talk just specifically about website um, content, website copy. I would be picking that and just putting that down as my priority. I use Trello to kind of do my business planner. I have a digital business planner available in the shop if you are looking for one, Um, but set your priorities for the month. And again, even if you do this by quarter, Um, That's a great way to think about just simplifying the tasks and priorities. What gets you excited? What are priorities that you want to take on this season in your business or this year or month or quarter? What have you been putting off that you want to get done? And I always throw in there, there's always kind of like these admin tasks that go along with business. I think a lot of coaches and people talk about like, you want to do this for your business and you want to like grow your social media following and you want to build an email list and you want to create a digital course. But what happens to all the admin tasks and where do you fit time to put into things like taking the courses that you purchased and the digital products and things like that? Where can you get those things done? Don't forget if you need to, I would say even like there's as many digital products or courses and things like that. Like if you wanted to spend a month or two or three, of course, on a course, depending on how they're built, you know, how complex they are, 
that's what you should be doing. If you just purchased a course, which I did actually at the end of last year, I'm excited about learning actually how to put a digital course online, which will be super fun. Um, that's going to be my priority for this quarter in terms of going through that curriculum and doing all the things for it. So that'll be a great way to do. Now let's talk about this. So here's, if you need a couple tips on your business and you're just thinking, these are all the things I don't really know what to do. Here's a little bit of lazy girl's guide to priorities for your online business. They should be not in specific order, but they should be include these five things. Number one, your email list. It is the most important asset that you have in terms of having a business. People in your email list know you, they like you, and they trust you. And you know what that means. You can have fun communicating with them. You can give them special goodies. You can grow that list and help more people reach more people with your message. So priority number one, email list. Number two, your offers. If you don't have any offers put in, um, that should be a priority for you, putting together your services in a way that you can package them so people will purchase them, whether that's one-on-one services, digital product services, other services, things like that. Third priority, collaborations. I think collaborations is also going to be an amazing theme and a a very high priority that people are really going to grab onto soon. Um, if they're they're doing it already, but I think more people are going to be paying attention to this is collaborations with other business owners. I am so excited about having guest speakers in my wellness group and have guest speakers on this podcast to talk about marketing. And I would love to speak on other podcasts. If you have one, let's connect collaborations and bundles and all of those things are super fun ways to meet people online. So that's a great priority. Number four, your marketing plan. When you have offers and you have email, you have to get that message out there. Whatever marketing looks like for you, it can be social media marketing. It can be, um, again, collaborations is a form of marketing. It really can be email. You can focus on that. You can be an affiliate blogger or have most of your sales, you know, come from promoting affiliate products, but you have to have some kind of plan to get that message out there into the world. Whether you're growing a group and you're doing live videos weekly, those are great ways to think about marketing. Number five, super, super important. Again, also a huge passion of mine and something I'm going to focus on a lot this year is long form content. I am telling you long form content is back. I'm calling it right now. I'm setting the trend. Blogging is going to be back. It's going to be so much fun. I think that people are really going to get away from this short form consumption. I really do. I, you know, we all love the gram. It's super fun. (laughs) You saw me on there recently. I posted about how close I am to giving it up. I might do a nine grid. I'm not sure yet, actually. We're still tossing this around. It's mid-January. But long form content is passionate um, in terms of what I think is important. I'm passionate about it because it was how I started my online business. So to me, it's kind of nostalgic, like going back to that. I am so excited about blogging this year. There's so many amazing tools in terms of website design and highlighting things and helping create your content ideas that either long form content in the form of a blog post, a video on YouTube, or a podcast, or some combination perhaps of the three, no more than two, is gonna be, should be an amazing priority for you, a top priority for you for your business. So again, the lazy girl's guide to priorities and reviewing your year and setting those things up should be your email list, your offers, collaborations, marketing, and long form content. And then fourth, so we're talking about reviewing your year and what you do. Make your um, marketing plan. Like I said, long form content is gonna be big. You can monetize it, you can repurpose it, you can transcribe it, you can do a podcast without makeup on. There's so many fun things you could do. Blogging at night when your kids are asleep is how I get started, really. And so, Create your marketing plan. How are you gonna get yourself out there? Are you gonna focus on Instagram? Are you gonna focus on your email list? Are you gonna create an amazing blog? Let's hear about those things that you're gonna do for your marketing plan. And then, pro tip, get a blank calendar when you sit down after you've reviewed the numbers and you've gathered your data and you've reflected on what your priorities are gonna be and you're making your plan, just get a blank calendar. Canva has a lot of great templates to just write things out. Print out January to December 23, and start to write things down. You're gonna see then where things plan out, where your workshops are gonna be, when your live videos are gonna publish, and all those goodies. It's super fun to do that. So I hope this helps you have a really really productive, reflective time on your business, whether you do this weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually. Four quick tips to review your year and plan, you know, a little bit for the next is 
just review in general. Reflect on the questions. What are the things you learned? What were your challenges? What are the goals going to be for the next year? Number two, get your data. Make sure you know where your revenue is coming in from, what your numbers look like these days. Three, set your priorities for your business. What are you going to focus on? And then four, make your mar- make your plan, make your content plan, make your marketing plan, and put those things in action. I hope this helps you have a wonderful and amazing day and you are inspired to grow your online business. As always, please come and find us at jessicawingla.com and we will see you on the next show. It is time for another favorite things before we go. So these are quick tools and resources that I use every single day, all the time to grow my business and live a happy, awesome life. Today's I mentioned in the show is AppSumo. They are at appsumo.com. They are the number one digital marketplace for entrepreneurs where you can get very low intro one-time lifetime deals on amazing software to do things like do videos, schedule your social media, schedule meetings with clients and all kinds of great add-ons and tools like that. So find the link in the show notes and get $10 off with my coupon today at appsumo.com. Thanks so much for tuning into the show today. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a review to help more people find our show and get all kinds of marketing and mindset tips for their own business. And if you are getting started with your branding, don't forget to grab our branding get started guide at our site at jessicawingland.com forward slash branding guide. Until next time.